Good evening, everyone. Welcome to ACT uh, Lectures, uh, another lecture in cinematic migrations. And um, this is actually uh, the first lecture of the semester. Uh, we've had previously John Acumfra and, and Lena Gopal, oh, don't worry, and Lena Gopal as guests. And uh, I'm thrilled to be able to welcome uh, Kazue Kobata, uh, and uh, she is a professor in the Department of Intermedia Art at Tokyo University of the Arts. And um, it's a great honor to be able to welcome her here from Tokyo. And um, I had heard about her uh, for several years, uh, enthusiastic stories. Uh, about the work that she's been uh, doing. And uh, also, she is, uh, this. I, I'd like to thank uh, Howie Chen, uh, who's an ACT affiliate, for helping to organize um, this visit, uh, as well as uh, Mika Tajima um, for the, the enthusiastic uh, support. Uh, Professor Kovata is an art curator and uh, she, is, she will be exploring themes of political and personal transformation in connection with aspects of technology, medium, and experience as they unfold in Japanese cinema. In 1982, Kazue Kobata opened Plan B in Nakano, Tokyo, Japan's first alternative art space run by artists. Her expansive career includes working as an adjunct curator and producer at the Museum of Modern Art PS1 in New York uh, and the Apple Arts Center in Amsterdam. She has translated numerous books on philosophy, science, contemporary art, photography, music, performance, and fashion by authors including Susan Sontag, who we were discussing on Saturday, it was very interesting. Uh, Lori Anderson, Ise Miyaki, Aiko Ishioka, Tony Gottfried, and Lyle Watson. Kobata has also worked with a number of established and experimental artists in film, video, and TV, including multimedia artist and film essayist Chris Marker, uh, who some of you may remember uh, had an exhibition last year here uh, at the List and at Harvard. Currently, she is Dean and Professor in the Department of Intermedia Art at the Tokyo National University of the Arts, uh, as I had said. And she serves as a juror for a number of contemporary art awards, grants, and programs. And so um, I'm going to turn this over uh, to Kobata-san. And uh, welcome very much. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, I'm very pleased. I am back in uh, Boston probably more than, what, since more than 20 or 30 years ago. Last I think I was here was when Edward Kennedy was running for presidency and I was making some documentary or something. I think so, I don't know. Maybe most of you were still nowhere. <laughs> but I'm very pleased to be back here. Anyway, let me sit down. And um, I'd like to thank Rene Green, Howie Chen for the mediation, and many people here, uh, uh, you know, to have this opportunity, especially at this point in my, uh, you know, life is just too big a way to say that. But at this point anyway, in my circumstances, I'm back here and meeting people and interesting people. And of course, this uh, is very stimulating. You know, when I learned, uh, was uh, approached if I would be available, it's, I liked it. Experiments in th thinking, action, and form. All three things are so important for me, and especially experiments in thinking is how I have uh, been, uh, you know, doing all the way. In other words, that there's no 
definite or finite plan that I've lived for and with, but it's always experimenting. And today, tonight as well, it's a part of my experimentation, <laughs> I don't know. And I really thank all of you uh, for giving me this opportunity. And um, maybe I would like to think that maybe one of the main reasons why the people thought of me is because of my, you know, fantastic appearance in Wim Wenders' film, Tokyo Ga, where I am at this uh, cafe, uh, no, bar, small bar, in the, gold, the famous Golden Quarters, uh, La Jete is the name, and then uh, sitting beside, uh, just next to uh, Chris Marker, uh, who doesn't drink, and I was the drinker, and I was just red, 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 and, and then vendors came in, and, and this is a one scene in the film. Maybe that made me, you know, kind of somebody to be remembered. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, as uh, Rone said, I have worked with uh, some filmmakers, along with many other types of... But Chris is uh, of a special importance for me uh, with respect to film, uh, you know, in a general sense, but more in, in uh, how can I say, in a sense of like how to be, how to be sincere, how to be true, how to be everything. His attitude about uh, many things uh, on top of his artistic or cinematic um, ingenuity. It's something that attracts me all the time. Uh, at any rate, so today, this I'd like to, well, tomorrow we will have a, a, you know, a longer session or whatever, more interactive session where I'd like to show you, you know, uh, some uh, clippings, but maybe today too, in the course of the talk, I would show you some clippings, not to let you all fall asleep. And, uh, uh, so I, I don't know, I mean, this is a title that I decided on. Uh, I don't know how true I can be to the title, but inside out is a very important uh, notion. Uh, but. I think that, as far as I'm concerned, this whole thing, and in relation to uh, cinema or film, or moving motion pictures or moving images, I think one cannot really uh, you know, see the whole picture, or even you know uh, think about how it, what it means to one's own, own uh, uh, life or attitude towards the world without, how can I say, giving some reference to the modernity, especially in terms of our, you know, how, how we view ourselves, each one of us, uh, within the whole picture of the material world. In that regard, I thought that maybe I'd just use the word inside and outside and inside out, inside out. So, I mean, let me just, uh, you know, spend a few minutes on what I mean by modern. Uh, I, by the way, I always use this, but uh, how do you make the demarcation between the pre-modern and modern, or, you know, period before the modern period. How, when would you say the modern period started in the art history sense, in a political sense, in whatever? Does anybody have a kind of a, a convenient <laughs> kind of scale? Well, I, I have been using the following scale for some some years, uh, when especially when I talk about uh, art at large. That is, André Malraux, the French uh, humanist, 
who once was a cultural minister, Andre Malraux wrote somewhere uh, about when did the modern start? Uh, yeah, he asked the same question. Where does, do you or does one think? Well, he uh, says, it is the moment or the day when beauty was freed from uh, aesthetics or freed from fine arts, the notion of fine art. In other words, that, uh, you know, whether it is fine arts or, uh, I don't know, beauty, the notion of beaux-arts, let's say, this beauty, beauty, boza, beautiful art. That is how the French named it earlier. And we call it, following the French, uh, I mean, in uh, the Chinese characters, seman semantic uh, characters, yes, we write beauty, uh, skill of beauty or something. In uh, English, it is what? Fine art. So it's more like similar. Right, sophisticated, you know. But it's according to Moreau, you, uh, he says, so it is the moment or the day in uh, uh, the, what it, when is it? 18th century, I think, that beauty was separated from uh, the art. In other words, Art didn't have to be beautiful, or <laughs> art didn't have to depict what the artist thinks beautiful. I mean, he doesn't have to justify that it's beautiful. In other words, of course, with uh, Goya, it was the misery, the violence, the silliness, and all those so-called negative human uh, traits came into something to be considered worth depicting. And that's a big uh, turning point uh, in this regard, uh, uh, you know, in, in fine arts. <coughs> and he says that this may be the beginning of the modern period in the art history sense, maybe in a larger sense. And I quite agreed with him when I first came across this uh, phrasing. And of course, you know, having been a you know, great appreciator of uh, Francisco de Goya's work too, I kind of liked this definition. So now, think of the modern uh, modernity. Uh, and uh, of course, Maro doesn't tell us or give us any hints as to when, what is the end of modernity? Uh, maybe he thinks it hasn't come to an end yet, and I don't uh, know. I, I have no way to def define it. But then comes along in the context of cinema or, you know, moving picture, moving uh, images. Well, the modern. Of course, uh, one more commonly shared approach to it is literature. And uh, from... Uh, the world of narratives or stories, mythologies, or the book, all kinds of things, uh, which are more or less uh, narratives, narr I mean, bar narrative form. Uh, but the, the modern literature, which will subsequently uh, place more emphasis on the individual human uh, uh, life, internal life, included psychology, uh, which is different from what preceded that. So this, uh, I don't know, Cervantes probably, uh, who was really, I'm not really, you know, referring to all these Spanish people uh, in a, how do you say, I don't know, it just so happened. <laughs> as I, you know, trace this history. But yeah, because Cervantes is described quite often as uh, somebody who's important in the 17th century to have uh, kind of 
delved into individual psychology, uh, even though this individual is quite a peculiar individual, but not, not just telling how the human beings behaved or, you know, from outside, but tried to get inside the individual. So the notion of individual and uh, how you, how can I say, how you perceive or recognize an individual being is, quite, I think it's very important in uh, the literary sense, but it's uh, in a modern literary sense. And at the same time, film uh, has kind of conspired with it, you know, in the following years leading up to this point. And uh, so then in the, f uh, I don't really refer to all those, you know, historical or, no, no, I'm not an expert of film in that regard. And you all must have better or, I'd say, uh, more sort of accurate information on those things. But um, the motion pictures, or let's say first uh, photography, uh, oh, certainly uh, is uh, very, very closely, I think. It's very important in the sense of what I try to say with the term the modern, or uh, one's sort of relationship, or, or one's, uh, how can I say, yes, identity uh, within uh, the, the larger world or material world uh, being kind of, you know, helped or dictated by this newly uh, emerging sense of the self, but whether or not if they had the term or notion of the self in a distinctive way, but the modern. And then not just the visual version of it or narrative version of it or the version which quite often people say, for example, in Japan, paintings and drawings and uh, sometimes used to tell narratives and stories uh, and for those who didn't, couldn't read, all these pictures were used to tell the story. I mean, you know, this is a means for telling a story uh, in, uh, towards the uh, illiterates. But I don't, maybe so, maybe so. Maybe uh, the prevailing political uh, reason was that. But in a, a more important sense, uh, given our uh, selves and given our body, body experience with what? With all these sensorial perceptions and et cetera. I think it's um, important that the moving or even, you know, still photos, these flat visual, um, how can I say, how to call it, I don't know, flat visual representation of the, how do you say, things with the, mass, I mean, 3D or more D dimensioned being, if you include our inside, be coinciding with uh, the more, uh, not visible, but more kind of, how do you say, linguistic or consciousness level uh, or thinking or feeling level of yet another way of telling a story or depicting what you think is reality is that's literature or writing or narrative. And then, I say, slightly later than that, the visual uh, 
approaches had uh, started. So this is how I see. And then uh, after that uh, very initial period, initial period with its very, very important kind of, how do you say, what we call in art, initial, how can it, initial, what is the word? This is over excitement. It is always this period for a while when a new technology or new medium uh, has come to be in common use. This initial uh, kind of uh, boom and, uh, you know, uh, feeling of joy. That's why people do certain very important experimental things at the initial period. But after that, so here I have to define uh, cinema or uh, into a kind of, how do you say, genre, uh, how can I say, a genre with certain shared approach or definition and even uh, certain shared, how can I say, creative approaches and standardized approaches versus cinema or moving uh, 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 or motion pictures just as a physical means which can be used for anything. It doesn't have to be, it's not just limited to storytelling or narratives or whatever. That's why. I mean, in this regard, uh, certainly, uh, moving image uh, has come to be uh, used for different purposes, storytelling, fiction, or you know, fantasies, all kinds of things, imagination, science fiction, and... Um, documentary. So in for documentary, maybe what was emphasized at one point was probably the truth, how, how, how much truth or, it, or cinema verite sense, again, how much reality there is, uh, versus uh, the more recent things, it, how much fantasy there is, how much imagination there is. In other words, it's, it's just a question of the distance. And also, of course, along with it, uh, although I don't uh, think I will I, uh, touch upon the whole notion of uh, the substance, the body of whatever we have as ourselves or others have as themselves, because this whole thing would be a totally another week uh, talk or discussion, and uh, so um, along. Uh, then certainly uh, uh, this film as a way of uh, storytelling and its technical aspect is not what I'm going to be touching upon today. It's more as more the motion picture or moving image. Uh, coming through uh, all kinds of uh, uh, different, uh, how do you say, missions. Uh, and as such, what uh, the, I don't know exactly what the, you know, Lumiere brothers or their father wanted to do with this new technology when they were working in, you know, photos or in pictures, but certainly they gave us, our human beings, a new experience, not just, uh, just uh, how do you say, not just th that they could, uh, how do you say, benefit from uh, the, repro the possibility of uh, reproduction, by that I mean repetition, repeated experience of a certain moment, but also reproduction, but uh, in the perception. Uh, that one thing is like we have, by now, uh, the modern and postmodern uh, people have even come through the evolution of our own sensorial system. Now we can, with no problem, or 
we just perceive things moving, really, in the, the motion picture, uh, when it's actually a lot to do with our own perceptive uh, system. And there's this, like seeing all these still frames, and we take it for granted, this is real. This is a what reproduction of the real substantial uh, body or matter. And then the speed, thanks to technology development, uh, we will we can really feel very very sort of realistic. Not just those people who are really uh, kind of sorry something. Uh, surprised and uh, had a big fear when they saw the train coming towards them. I mean, even we can sometimes have a chill. Uh, so our body has come to be adjusted, very sort of, yeah, not, not intellectually, but as a body has come to respond to what we see in a motion picture, if it's done well in that regard. And uh, so this kind of thing has come through uh, uh, quite, uh, yes, many, I mean, yeah, a number of cycles. That is to say, the technology made it possible for us to see or experience certain uh, uh, reproduced uh, realistic uh, moments in vision, sound, and movement, then we have come to be, sort of have uh, adjust to that, not just on a, a sensorial level, which is very important, but psychological level in all levels that we, even knowing this is a fiction, even knowing that this is an artifact, we react to that, our bodies sometimes react to that. And there was this cycle of, so which gave birth to another type of, uh, you know, new approaches or technologies. And it gave, uh, yet again, another type of experience and another type of even very emotional kind of experiences that uh, we have. And one uh, good example of this pornography. I mean, one gets really, rea I mean, not me, but <laughs> I mean, it's the whole cycle of, uh, how, how do you say, catch up and then another stage, catch up, another stage kind of cycle. Uh, so this is uh, a question to do with not only perception, but how do you say, uh, uh, yeah, uh, assumption, perception, that all kinds of mental cycle. But of course, uh, and how do you say, yes, on the other hand, we have the whole history of uh, moving pictures uh, or fiction pictures, uh, movies, as art or as commercial products. And there's a whole thing, another kind of history that should be described and recorded. And we have benefited, all of us, I think, uh, in different periods from that as well, of course. But th that's not uh, what I think I can, uh, you know, talk about. Uh, so I don't, I skip that. Anyway, uh, so we as um, film uh, viewers uh, have also undergone changes. And one change, as uh, Rene mentioned, is that uh, th thanks to, or whatever, and for lack of better word, thanks to democratization of technology. Uh, it has, uh, the film has come to be something that people without any skill, without any knowledge of the technology 
can sometimes take advantage of for whatever, uh, you know, shooting your newly born babies, uh, you know. Uh, uh, oh, I, sh I shouldn't use the word shooting, that, that's kind of threatening. Shooting your newly born baby, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Should be very careful. <laughs> and, but yes, and in French, uh, maybe many of you know, I still have a problem with this. When, you know, like democratization of the technology. In French, there's, they use that word, uh, vulgarisation. But if I say vulgarization in English, I somehow feel not very right. You know, vulgar has a certain notion of like, I don't know, or too close. I don't know, how about uh, in Spanish? Does one say vulgarisation? for like popularization. popularization. Maybe that's better, yes. Mm, yeah, popularization, yeah, right, right. Anyway, uh, this has really uh, come to, you know, nowadays, you know, we have m sometimes, and then uh, more interesting uh, visual documents uh, from that end rather than from the commercial end. But, Anyway, and one thing that I'd like to just briefly touch upon, which I think I will do more with uh, images. Uh, could you uh, to, uh, now show, uh, let's say, I have, I have marked it uh, for, yes, uh, clipping, clipping 12, could you? And this is about uh, this political uh, a sort of shift of who tells the story, whose story is it? That from professionals, from artists, from whoever who wants to do that. And this is an example of a highly political uh, 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 movement uh, the, in the, let's say, 70s through early 80s of uh, the lowest class man manual laborers and uh, non-unionized, but anyway. So they made, decided to make a film because for many reasons uh, that they just wanted that people can see it or can learn more about it just because of the heightened attack on them by the police, by the, uh, you know, criminal yakuza's, criminal, and all that. This, their work is mostly uh, construction. Just, could you just show it? So, uh, they started filming it. Yeah, you can show it uh, now. This is just a, this is just a scene of uh, bargaining. Uh, collective bargaining with the officials, Tokyo city officials, and the workers. And of course, you know, it's taken from their side, their back. They're so they're bargaining, and those on this, yeah, you can read it. Uh, well, uh, we have some scenes that I'd like to show you tomorrow, too in terms of Japanese side. But anyway, these people decided, because nobody really um, make uh, any, uh, I mean, you know, any thing out of their struggle, records it, they want that the, the people know, uh, so they decided to make the film. And there was actually one uh, uh, documentary, professional documentary director who, decided to make a film. So he started the shooting, and on the very first day, after uh, the end of the f uh, very first day, this professional documentarist uh, filmmaker was killed by a hired sniper, uh, who hired, of course, these are all kind of allegations. So, and then there was a big riot, because of the assassination and all that. But it, 
the struggle continued. Then after the film was completed by the second, uh, yeah, this is, the film was completed. I mean, one of the workers said, I will be the director. And he was very good, and he worked with others. Then they completed the film. That's why we can see the film. And then they had a big party at, uh, a big party at home. And uh, they left the home uh, to go back to the, how do you say, job hunting office early in the morning. And this second director was shot from this distance by another hired sniper who, uh, I mean, the people somehow didn't like that the film be shown or completed. Oh, of course, this, there are all kinds of allegations to do with uh, contractors, big capitals, uh, hiring uh, snipers. And anyway, so this is probably a very rare film for which two directors were killed in such brutal ways, uh, which doesn't add to the value of the film, of course, but I think it's important to recognize that. Anyway, so I'd like to uh, go about this. Uh, oh, you can continue showing it. Uh, I mean, just silently even, or whatever. Ah, no. To, uh, no. Mo kore clipping awatteru? Kore awatteru. And I think uh, uh, it is possible that uh, uh, act or uh, can have a separate sort of full version showing at some point if I leave. Yeah. So, I mean, if anybody is interested, you can see it in full version uh, on a separate occasion. And uh, that's true with some other things. So, and uh, I have to be very careful with the time that I know. There are two more things, actually, I would just briefly uh, touch upon. That is, this, the right of narrative, or, or the right to make one's own narrative in, through the cinematic media is, of course, it's, I would say the beginning, not the beginning, but early, very sort of uh, important example as such is this. This is, yeah, uh, uh, the community they live. Uh, anyway, so this, is, this one is uh, b important, for, important for me and for many other people uh, in a political sense. But in a more personal sense, in a more kind of a recent postmodern sense, uh, after Mr. Deleuze and many others, are the, I think this, it's true in many uh, societies, including the United States, where this whole thing with the digi digital technology or video is uh, just such a ordinary, coffee table uh, stuff that people just uh, make one's own uh, video work. And uh, so, so this is still the Sanya, uh, uh, Sanya is the name of that movement of the, or of the community. You know, this is exactly the scene just after the first director was stabbed from the back to death. You know, it's only just, so, um, the, another second example I'd, I'd like to show you is, uh, well, before that, this was in 1980-something, uh, eight, and uh, maybe around the same time, uh, something important I saw, I felt, I, I, in retrospect, I find, this is like around the 80s, the turn of the decade, uh, in a different sense, but in terms of film and moving image and video, uh, but something that has come to be so important for us by now, which is the global internet. 
In other words, the world connected all the time, or how can I say, the simultaneity of our experience. And in the arts, uh, that was done, of course, by many uh, ones, maybe unconsciously un or unconsciously. And one example that I'd like to show you, uh, to Nao-san, is uh, this uh, series of different versions of a similar attempt, uh, experimented and uh, edited into a, 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 what you will see, some others by Namjo Pike. And uh, Namjoon uh, worked rather closely with uh, John Cage uh, for certain versions. Or he was more on his own uh, uh, for other versions. But he actually did work uh, with many uh, artists, uh, including Laurie Anderson or some others, uh, uh, as like as you will see in the, this was, I think, uh, to do with George Orwell. That's why I call it Mr. Orwell. And uh, uh, other versions uh, you may come across uh, is entitled uh, mm, Rap, what is it? Hroshiki Tenka, Rap, Rap of the World, or something like that. Rap of the World, um, you know, because it, uh, we have this uh, thing, uh, both in Japan and Korea and in Asia at large. Maybe you have that too. You, you have a large sheet of cloth in which you put all your under, underwear or clothes and you just wrap up and just go on a trip. So this is a very simple. So <laughs> Namjoon entitled this uh, version, Wrap Up the World. And uh, maybe, could you show it, uh, part of it? Yes, thank you. So this was uh, around the same time as like non-professionally trained uh, filmmakers or people coming to make films. This is popular. Kind of very rudimental kind of time-honored video, early day uh, approaches. But so, popularization for one thing, but almost at the same time, this whole thing of uh, the very sort of um, primitive uh, form of um, simultaneity, global simultaneity, internet, or being connected type of attempts were made um, by artists. So, you know, these are all, just all those things. And some of them, I mean, most uh, just uh, uh, now sung. Now, oh, he's not there. And some of them are just clippings of the works that uh, the artists contributed to this. There may be some parts that is unique to this particular uh, tape or performance, I hope, but if not. It is something that somebody contributed. Anyhow, uh, so this is something uh, 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 compiled from a multiple uh, version of, uh, how can I say, events with audience in most cases where 
uh, where uh, either Namjoon Pike uh, was in Tokyo or like uh, John Cage somewhere else with uh, input from other, place, other places in the world in a rather early day primitive way and uh, the whole idea was uh, wrap up the world, that is, wanting to emphasize the simultaneity, oneness, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't think that this is like uh, available for many uh, you know, markets. That's why I just thought that maybe I'd just uh, bring it over. And, uh, But it, uh, it's so nice to, sh you know, you see Ginsburg in a healthy state. And uh, so, okay, th this is uh, the case. Thank you. And of course, uh, I'll leave it with the uh, act, so maybe if you want to see it, you can just ask for it. And. Uh, so this is the artists uh, around the turn of the decade becoming more and more and more interested in using uh, the moving image or the digital technology into making something, what, global or simultaneous. Uh, then I told you about uh, the kind of popularization that, 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 you know, like uh, no need for skillful technique or no need for expensive uh, technology. And then the release of the right uh, to make one's own narrative uh, by one's own, uh, one's own, I mean, on, on, on one's own. Well, so, as example of, uh, as an example, let's see, with what shall we see? And, uh, you know, we saw that political movement people, out of necessity or out of a very strong desire to appeal to the society at large, they did it. They made their own. Uh, but that was made in on 16 millimeter film in those days, even at that time. Uh, so it was expensive too. But this, these are, you know, more to uh, uh, simpler and uh, less expensive uh, digital technology era uh, works. And one, uh, what is the time now? Yeah. I'd like to show you, uh, because this is not long, but if you can bear with it, like f 15 minutes. I hope uh, to share this with uh, uh, as many people as possible. This is just a uh, uh, 15 or so minutes uh, documentary, or documentary, I mean, it's a uh, face based on the fact. This is by a young uh, uh, filmmaker uh, who is just graduating or something. And at one point she, uh, you know, had some things that she wanted to consult with me. And I was, and the one thing is that she is, this is not so common as in the United States, was she was born between a Japanese father and a Korean, not uh, Filipino mother who was working in Japan or so, and, and they got married, and she was, and she's 22 or so. And she's uh, into filmmaking, and uh, she wanted uh, uh, what to do, to consult with me, uh, discuss what to do as a film, uh, she, she wanted to make a film of, or something around her mother. That she knew, but she didn't know, so she, maybe this, she had some, you know, very difficult psychological as well as technical problems. 
And so she would come to me like four, two, three times. And I didn't like uh, listening to her discussion the circumstances as I uh, found it. Sh here she is, uh, you know, with some difficulty with the family because of their international marriage, the parents. And she has this it, big artistic intellectual problem that she discusses with me. And then, oh, uh, well, what shall I do? Such a kind of elitist problematique on one's mind. So I said, I don't like it. Uh, and you tell me that your mother is just watching television all day long and not going out be because she thinks, the mother, that she shouldn't be so visible. Somehow she thinks she's hiding. And the, uh, her younger brother is uh, it's kind of, you know, delinquent. He's, he's not satisfied with the family. And father is uh, working uh, every day in, in the company. And only she has this kind of lofty problematic in him. I didn't, I didn't like it. So I told her, you know, if you want to make a film about your mother, why don't, why don't you just talk to your family and make the film together with them, the whole family? Maybe your, you know, delinquent uh, brother can at least you know, hold a microphone for you. <laughs> Maybe your, you know, father can. So. Then she decided to do that. And this is the result of it. And if you don't mind, this is one example I can think of, this case, uh, I mean, result of the popularization of the technology, even though she is studying film herself, but how film has been brought closer to uh, people uh, and uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, without uh, do, uh, 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 why don't we just, if you don't mind, would you like to? Yes. Okay, <laughs> let's. So this is, uh, the mother is, uh, yes, came from the Philippines just to, uh, the Filipino people, many come to Japan for income, for cash income, and many are entertainers, like singing and and many are working in what we call water business, that is, bars and uh, it's entertainment business. So, in other words, that they are sometimes looked down upon, uh, uh, like being engaged in prostitution. That's why the mother had this psychology of not being visible, not really being in the Japanese society, even though she is a mother of uh, somebody who's 20 some years old. She had been in the shadow uh, all the way through. Uh, but I don't think I have to say to more about the situation. You, you have experienced imagination enough to understand it. Let's turn down the, the yeah, light. This is made last is she doing there? Right at the end, your cousin here. Before, it, this was, there was a big, uh, what? I uh, to communicate with you closely. Earthquake in the Philippines around that time by coincidence. The title of this is Mother's Name is the title of the of the this work. Thank you. 
something. Hi, how's your mom? Is she doing good there? By the way, America is in here in the Philippines. I hope to communicate to you closely. Res response. here in the Philippines who have watched the video of Mercy Tabat Shop on YouTube. Please tell your father to communicate with us. Thank you. I'm your cousin here in the Philippines. Please tell your father you see us to be hard. Communicate with us. We have watched the video of your mother, Mercedita Bachoco. Bachoco's mother is still alive. Please communicate with us. Please respond. We have the photos of your mother here in the Philippines. Please respond. <laughs> So thanks to the big earthquake which attacked the Philippines, this cousin and the, the, this family and the, all those communications started. Till, there, till then, for 20 years, they had no communication. And then as a result, you know, they came to know about each other and about mother's uh, parents for the first time. Uh, sorry, there was a big typhoon, not earthquake, Leyte Island. Delinquent younger brother. <laughs> this is somewhat artificial, but they go. They went on a weekend family excursion, a trip to the countryside, to a farming village, which the mother liked. She, she likes always watching television of uh, rural scenery. Yeah, your senators scenery. are fine. We're here, we're here in the Philippines. We hope to talk to you soon regarding my auntie. Just contact us to this number, 
Japan. Cousin Marito, can you give us your contact number? Cousin Mariko, our grandparents is fine. Our grandmother is 70 years old. Our grandfather is 94. How about your mother? How is she there? How is your auntie Mercedes Tagachoko? Your father is Iyo. Your brother Kwangyo. Your grandparents here in the Philippines misses you all. They want to see you and your brother. Wow. Good to hear that you are going in school. I hope you can graduate so that you can visit here in the Philippines. We are your family. There's a lot that I can help. Cousin Mary, I need your Cousin Mary, help Cousin Mary, please respond. I have your contact number. Cousin Mary, Cousin Mariko, please reply. Cousin Mariko. So they're staying at uh, you know somebody's place, and this is the father saying talking about yes in Japanese houses usually you have a Buddhist altar. And then uh, that particular summer season uh, is a week when we have a Buddhist ritual, a Buddhist uh, thing that the ancestors come back uh, during to visit us. I mean, he's explaining uh, the history or tradition for the first time in their family life.
<laughs> I forget language. <笑>思ってるかったね。思ってるかった。やっぱりマリコはあの正しいですね。じゃあ今度行こうか。ね。先生聞いとか。あの紹介するからね。うん。一緒。うん、いいよ。あの、マリコでも I find I find this uh, this last uh, sentence or statement uh, this mother says to her daughter the filmmaker is I really think it's really great because she had been she married the guy uh, she had been living in Japan but in a shadow trying not to be visible not going out, and even in her la conversation with her uh, relatives uh, towards the end, well, I, I forgot the language because I, mostly I use Japanese. Anyway, so in this very last, the last sentences, yes, yes, is, is, yes, Mariko, maybe you're right. I am, um, let's go to the Philippines together. I'm going to take you to the Philippines. So she took her, her own position and says that. I like that uh, ending statement very much. Anyhow, so this is one example of somebody, I shouldn't say she is a pure amateur, but very young, non, not very experienced one. Uh, just depicting their own story uh, in this. So this I include this into this private narrative uh, category. Uh, and there are some other, I would like to leave some uh, time for questions, but there are uh, some, ano, kanojo no, ano, clippings of this type of private, uh, these are short uh, things, but this is not about her own family or anything. This is uh, a right to the narrative, yes, but it's not exactly the a person uh, is making. Uh, uh, no, it's these these uh, clippings that I have now uh, to show you. Uh, by a trained, uh, but you know, not, not professional, a trained um, uh, filmmakers or documentarists about uh, kind of a nar uh, uh, one's narrative or the uh, you know protagonist's narratives 
uh, those who would not speak up usually, uh, somehow, you know, going through certain personal contacts, they began to let the, the, the filmmaker, Liu uh, is the name of the uh, filmmaker, but she is a Chinese and had some experience of studying um, uh, film uh, in London for some months or something, and at our university as well. But so her stories about other people or other women, uh, but wh why I show this uh, uh, is, even though it's not a self-portrait or self-narrative, it is done by a perspective from outside, but um, why I show this is because nowadays I think there are increasing number of uh, art, uh, filmmakers that I observe who make uh, not about themselves, like in the case of this Filipino uh, mother, but uh, not just about themselves, not, not about themselves, about others, but have a sufficient anthropological, in a way, uh, uh, kind of perspective. Uh, that's why I'm showing it. Uh, another sort of like possibility at, for the right of narrative. So, there's one also about uh, Uzbekistan. Well, maybe that's timely. You know, whatever. <laughs> Or the housekeeper? But the filmmaker herself, uh, uh, she calls this, yeah. But I personally had a doubt about that because it was fundamental person. But that time you were so unhappy with Shah. Anything you want, not the Shah. Uh, nowadays, you know, it's not. It's very common that the artists are always migrating, uh, working in different places. But this uh, filmmaker, she uh, is making this series of short uh, things about uh, people who are migrating out of necessity for survival, for example. So actually her uh, series title includes the word migration in a different sense. Okay.
This summer, I went back to my hometown, Beijing, China. Beijing has become a city of dreams. Her name is Liu Xinhua, from one of the poorest provinces in China, Anhui. For more than 20 years, she has been working as a part-time housekeeper at the house of the ordinary city families. So this uh, young uh, uh, filmmaker, I think she has studied or worked uh, uh, in some places, like in, of course, in China, but uh, uh, Europe, uh, London mostly, and then Eastern Europe. And she spent uh, some good time in uh, Korea as well, where similar a movement is uh, emerging. And so she joined uh, some Korean groups that are also into this. And um, there is this whole uh, growing uh, uh, interest in uh, uh, projects of uh, production, archiving, festivals of both uh, media artworks, as well as uh, more or less uh, sort of um, f uh, this uh, new type of, uh, let's say, anthropological or private narrative uh, uh, film works or moving image works. Uh, some are very important uh, major festivals, and one of which is this Tokyo one uh, held every February, uh, where uh, anthro visual anthropology or anthropological uh, films or moving picture works were featured this year. So, having said that, these works can be shown in full, uh, in separate settings. I think we had better turn off. Now, Saonegaishimas. And uh, probably switch to uh, questions and answers so that all of us can be out of the building by nine. <laughs> that was uh, what I was told. <laughs> Thank you for listening and bearing with my random talk. Thank you. This oh, check. Um, I, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, especially coming from having um, seen also work, new work, um, along this vein here in the U.S. Um, and I have a question, that, um, kind of to tap into your perspective, seeing um, what you mapped out, the, the, the kind of transformations and different narratives and, um, and uh, within uh, the cinematic format. Um, what, what do we do with all these stories now that everybody is enabled to tell their story? <laughs> and <laughs> what especially do we do? Right. <laughs> we well, I think, I mean, it's, it seems like a simple Are question, the but... flooding of uh, private stories being told, and who well, listens to that? Especially you know? with the, the one clip you, so, you showed us in the beginning where it's the story of the worker. You know, there's... there's a, I mean, the, the Chinese... Uh, ah, the okay. workers' movement. So that's a collective exactly. uh, struggle. Yes. Where stories can be kind of tied into... You know, it becomes a social struggle. Yeah. Uh, the stories are able to kind of be woven together. What, how, do, how would a configuration happen when, when there's this many stories, mm. different multiplicities. Um, how, you know, just from your perspective, how, how could you, can uh. you see how 
um, different kind of uh, collective well, configurations could happen. Well, this one is happen. really typical sort of, uh, how do you say, how, how do you call it, movement uh, epoch struggle document, uh, uh, typical. It's not private. It's highly political and also, you know, like a radical politics scene. So they, the community still exists with a very bad situation with new uh, members coming these days mostly from outside of Japan, but people who need money. But it, so it exists with more complex racial, political, economic uh, exploitation, all kinds of problems, plus gender problems as well. So it still exists with far less job opportunities. And so they are already talking about Olympic Games going to be held in Japan in some years. And uh, maybe the same thing as in the early 60s when all these workers could earn a lot of money doing you know, hard work although but there'd be job opportunities. So again, in the Olympic Games, maybe we can have good uh, labor market, but they're already talking about it. But otherwise, it's really, you don't uh, really need so many human labor that much as in the 1960s and 70s nowadays with automatization, prefab technology and everything. So you can't expect that that would bring anything. Uh, but overall economic structure uh, is so much different, of course. Uh, from so, But still, this community exists. The, such a strong uh, workers' movement, its style, its organization don't, doesn't exist. Totally different. But somehow they have kept a committee at least to show this film regularly over the years to this day. And these occasions uh, can be used as an educational or, how do you say, propaganda uh, opportunities where you invite uh, activists or workers, give a lecture, and to my surprise, and also, how do you say, to my uh, amazement, young people, let's say university level uh, or young workers, do continue to come uh, every time. You have like this or a bit larger audience each time. Uh, the workers or the student and a lot of my students from the university doing not only film, they, and then they come to learn about this film, but not just about this film, but about, oh, Tokyo looked like this in the 60s, or Tokyo had this contradiction, or Tokyo had this problem, oh, there were workers who had to leave this kind of life. I mean, they learn about the history through this film, and this is still continuing. Uh, this um, uh, alternative space plan B uh, you mentioned in my introduction. So this is the place we have offered, to, we offered to them, hey, you know, like uh, whenever you want, why don't you just use this space with no money or anything? You can just use it freely. And we are, have our, our careful, astute enough, or we are, how do you say, I say, militant enough not to be afraid of police uh, oppression, if any, on this illegal showing movement. So they have continued to do that at a month, of, you know, once a month, or once every two months or something. So you can always go back. I mean, I talk about this, and where can I see it? It's on sale on the internet? No way. But you can go and see it you know, next month. I can always refer them to this, and this is not just to see it, 
they will meet some ex-workers, they will, how do you say, young people, feel the culture or reminiscence of the culture which used to exist uh, but doesn't anymore. So it serves in a multiple way that, um, yeah. This I learned, I mean, this idea came to my mind I think it was because of French tradition, Paris, there were certain places where, you know, one could go anytime to see the good film, which isn't shown anymore. But then there's just one place in the middle of the night, like starting at 12, one can go and you can see this film. So I thought uh, something similar to that. Maybe we can do something like that. Or even... Maybe even at a private home we can do that. I mean, if there's a, I mean, at least that the first Sunday uh, at this time we'll show this. But of course we can do it in a but much more you know sort of rational way if you have a place to contribute. I don't know if that if this answered your question. Mm. Mm. So then, when the stories are so, mm. so many, yes. Mm. What if we just, why can't people focus on? Uh, on a, pardon, uh, yeah. So it's the same question. Yeah. So the question is again, there are what to do with so many stories now when they're not a collective struggle and so openly. I see, I see. Uh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Well, that's why there's this whole uh, co collective or like, col uh, you know, amongst, like I have, I know that th there's this uh, filmmaker, this one, this one, this one, this one. They sometimes work together, organize certain occasions uh, or workshops. And this uh, Chinese, uh, this Lu San, she's very active in giving a kind of a, uh, not in giving, but joining workshops or joining certain occasions where she would just uh, encourage a newcomer to make her uh, their own. And they also work for staging more occasions for showing and collective uh, viewing and uh, sometimes making collaboration. Yeah. Does it answer your question in part, at least? <laughs> yes, hi. I'm over here. <laughs> the other end. <laughs> um, to that question, and is there the possibility um, or the tradition even, hopefully, of showing such films <coughs> in these three informal areas? Pardon? One in other formal areas as a regular basis, a few types of places in the United States do allow for this individual storytelling and or performance art. Three, three One of them is the, the very local town level library. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Library. Yes, do they have that? Uh -huh. That's one of three. Uh -huh. And then second is town birthdays and celebrations. They're uh -huh. small enough that they don't seem to be, you know, uh, threatening to mm. the whole culture. <laughs> uh, and the third is the pockets of both post high school, uh, I'm not sure if you call it a high school, uh -huh. uh, the art schools. Yes. So they have final projects and they have speakers as you are here. Mm. And so as a regular route to mm. be allowing the wider audience yeah, that will never ever question. see them yes. otherwise, unless you get them earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily art schools, but uh, Japanese universities still have that tradition of like, you know, favoring rebellious things. When they have a budget, like, uh, you know, annual uh, student body sponsored, uh, uh, festival of all, not just with art, entertainment, and everything. They usually have some brackets that can 
in incorporate uh, very highly political uh, stuff. But that's only like seasonal. It's not on regular basis so much unless you have, uh, you know, just groups, community groups, whatever, uh, who are seriously into these topics or issues. Then, I mean, regularly you can, even regularly you can expect maybe. But I can't uh, think of other ways. So it's either schools or community, yeah. Hi, I yes. I'm here. Yes. Thank you so much oh. for these Thank really you. moving clips that you wow. showed us and wow. also contextualized yes. in a way that in, involves not just the technology mm. and the aestheticization, Perfect. but also the freeing or the liberate, the, the I, I don't know what to say, but it's like the, the liberatory aspect uh, yes. of something coming out of the technology mm. that's beyond yes, just the technical. Important. Yes. And I'm very um, uh, curious about your, um, your take on the right to narrate, because yes. it seems like it's not just the right to narrate mm -hmm. and tell your story, yeah. but also to act upon mm -hmm. um, exactly. uh, making communities or making spaces where these stories can be heard and told, mm -hmm. which go simultaneously mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. like what you suggested or yes. what I know very little about uh, mm. the plan B or the yeah, space. Because uh -huh. yeah. without these spaces, yes. um, it, it doesn't seem so easy to mm. be able to listen. You need a sensibility and some kind of a, it's not a curatorial aspect, but mm. some kind of an organization that you suggested, like mm. a rational way. If you have a space, yes. you can safely here, mm, yes. like you said, it's militant. Mm -hmm. So you also have, I mean, these are very particular mm -hmm. uh, types of spaces. These are not just... Exactly. Could you say yeah, a little bit I'd more? Yeah, I'd like to, you know, maybe I can spend a bit more, you know, like time or talk on a bit more concrete uh, uh, level tomorrow about that workers' uh, film. I mean, a kind of a anatomy, uh, but the, yeah, as you say, See, yeah. But I think it's important, like, like this occasion, that, well, one can organize something like a showing on this, like I, as I said, at the university, uh, you know, festival, then they see, yeah, let's learn about history, let's learn about that, they show it. But like, from the perspective of filmmaking, or from the perspective of history of film, one may organize something. And then the other group may organize something from the highly political perspective. I mean, different people from different angles or multiple angles may, you know, uh, offer or may make occasions for showing these films from different perspectives or even from for different reasons. I think that shot has to be done rather than being kind of, you know, just be, you know, used or confined in narrow uh, perspective uh, field. I think it's interesting um, what you're suggesting. Mm. Just kind of follow up on uh, what Jaisal mm. was uh, mentioning, mm -hmm. uh, and also what Howie was asking. Mm -hmm. I think in the presentation this evening, uh, you brought up a number of different mm -hmm. points of uh, entry <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and different approaches. It could be, I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's interesting also to connect some of these things with the longer history. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. that's one yeah. of the things I welcome from this presentation tonight, mm -hmm. to be able to see um, these efforts that were mm -hmm. made. Uh, I mean, often when you think of Namjoon Pike, for example, mm -hmm. don't necessarily think of Wrap mm -hmm. Up the World. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just think of lots of monitors. Um, 
Whereas this was really interesting to see, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to show it uh, yes. so we can look at the entire thing. Mm, but yeah. uh, I, I like this idea of the agency of the artists, uh, and uh, that seems to be something that you've been in, engaged with mm -hmm. over time yes, uh, yeah. to, to focus on that as a way of uh, enacting mm -hmm. uh, and creating space, mm. uh, as well as for thinking. Uh, and so this is something that I th I'm really interested in, uh, particularly in relation to cinematic migrations yeah. and having a number of different ways, uh, as you say, uh, that it's possible to, to work. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I just wondered if you had anything to say or add about that. Well. <laughs> We're still thinking about it. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I'm not particularly, a, a, you know, big, cinephile in terms of, uh, you know, feature films. I, mean, I like films, but I'm not Susan Sontag, you know, so I mean, you know, I see other things, or I read, I do other things. But I have come to realize the possible potential, uh, you know, uh, power of, or versatility of uh, the this visual uh, technology, uh, which probably, you know, we're in the middle of it now. You know, it's really expanding and developing and uh, deepening every uh, minute, but maybe there's something more. And what is important is, even though I couldn't really dwell on that, this whole relationship of new technology enabling us and giving initial euphoria and we do all kinds of things and gradually the genre gets refined and then, you know, like you throw away unnecessary things and then, you know, like it's kind of complete. And then an, another new technology. But in, in addition to that cycle, I think there's always these, uh, how do you call it, uh, how can I say that? Yeah, walk on the wild side. <laughs> walk on the wild side, do remain, and may give birth to another type of uh, evolution. So this sort of a spiral, I think, uh, would give a much more rich uh, uh, kind of uh, process. Hi, thank you again for that um, presentation. And one of the follow-up questions I had was this: these models that you started out yes. with about history, modernism, yeah. time, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? These formats that mm. become periodizations, mm. how we mark time, what now mm. becomes the new mm. or a moment that becomes a point of rupture or mm. break. Like those are the kinds of things that you had set mm. up, and I thought were really effective. Mm. And just kind of going with what you just said now about history and technology. I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit about this idea of the simultaneity mm. um, in terms of this model or, or form to think about. Um, there's a kind of idea that somehow these narratives are simultaneous or they're available or they're global in mm. reach in certain mm. ways. Um, but then the examples that we saw here were still on that intimate, close, personal level. Mm. Um, so there is always this kind of paradox, too, mm -hmm. that's happening, right, in these ways in which there's a kind of idea of a global yeah. reach or yeah. now there's a kind of pulpit yeah. that people speak right. from or travel to. But then you brought up those very important distinctions between mo modes of migration or movement, right? Some force, exactly. some not, yes. some have access, right. the kind of fall fallacy that we have sort of free reign. And I think uh, the increasing, uh, it is increasing tending towards migration mm -hmm. rather than immigration. In other words, this new pattern of being is not about settling mm -hmm. that, right. but to, you know, you're in constant, you're at least you're free to move along or move, uh, move about or move around. And that's new to me. I mean, for somebody who grew up, uh, you know, like in a, uh, for a bit earlier time and seeing all these uh, immigration issues as something very crucial. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it's more about migration, constant migration, which enable certain people to be really active and rich and searching. Uh, so they prefer. Of course, I'm not saying that you know, still the whole, uh, you know, the whole survival reasons for immigration as well as migration, but at the same time, it's quite a different uh, way of being or mental state compared to migration and uh, I mean, between migration and immigration, I think. Or emigration, even. <laughs> what was once very much fashionable, even in the arts. But it's, I mean, you know, Irene, you don't think of just e to become an emigre in Paris. Mm. But you want to be in <laughs> touch, right, here. I mean, it's a new form. And of course, thanks to all this technology, we're doing it actually, you know. But I think, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about this. Uh, oh, thank you, that's helpful. Historical thing. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'm seeing. Uh, yes, this nine yeah. o'clock. Yeah, we're, we're we're hitting the time, <laughs> so I just want to thank uh, oh, Kazue Kovata for being with us, and uh, also uh, invite you guys. With you and watch yeah. together the Which seminar <laughs> tomorrow. See, see it in a group, uh, not group, but mm -hmm. see it with many other people. Uh, I like it very much. So thank you for thank you being for here. Occasion. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thank you, Renee, and Howie especially. Thank you.